my activism and my advocacy began in uh, high school. Uh, that's when like my identity as an undocumented immigrant like became really apparent into how it was gonna play into my life. As part of my work as a, as a youth organizer on Many Languages, One Voice, I had to train immigrant students on how to become community organizers. One of the philosophies that I have is that if you want to be a community organizer, you have to take up space, you have to be comfortable in your own skin. Me, along with other organizations, are working so that the climate movement can be more inclusive of natives, immigrants, women of color, young people specifically, and all of these communities are fighting to make up space in those decision-making tables. I want to improve my community in any capacity that I can, and sometimes that looks like activism, sometimes that looks like testifying for city council, and like sometimes it's like going back to school, getting technical knowledge so that you can influence infrastructure that your community is going to use for many, many years going after. Me impulsa mucho el deseo de querer ser parte de la solución, no del problema cuando el Papa Francisco habla de la Laudato Si, que es una encíclica, un documento que habla del cuidado de nuestra casa común. Damos una serie de talleres sobre qué es la cuenca, qué son los ríos, cómo cuidar la naturaleza, cómo ser parte de la solución, cómo hacer el reciclaje, sobre la importancia que la comunidad latina se involucre en, en el cuidado del medio ambiente para que la comunidad tome conciencia de que somos una conexión, somos un ecosistema. También hay que educar a nuestras nuevas generaciones. I always have been a nature lover. You know, growing up, my family, we always went camping, we went to, to the parks, we were always taken to enjoy the outdoor spaces. The Latino population in, in Prince George's County in the state of Maryland and throughout this region has grown significantly. And in some places in the watershed, uh, the Latino population is as high as 60%. There's a tremendous population that is not being reached. At Defensores de la Cuenca, we really want to work to bring resources to the community. If we accomplish that uh, through a partnership, through creating a program, through talking through policy, uh, you know, we've, we've had a successful day. I love to come to Bladensburg Waterfront Park. It's beautiful, there's lots of herons, cranes, turtles, uh, there's miles of trails, and it's really just a, a, a little gem. It is very important that we work together to give access to green space to our communities. Okay, I'm gonna do this very, very quickly. This is a towhee nest. So here we have uh, Tories Mountain Mint, considered endangered in Maryland, New York, New Jersey, Connecticut. So this is an eastern coyote, and you should see how it just cleared this fence I'm leaning on right now. It's amazing. So Capital Naturalist, the way I came up with the name, we're in a wonderful location for uh, for being a naturalist. It is a clover, it has three three part leaves and so forth. We're at the northern limit of the southern animals and plants. Those long tails are thought to mix up the echolocation on bats. We're at the southern limit of the northern animals and plants. We're close enough to the coastline, we can see lots of animals there. But we're close enough to the mountains, so lots of things get washed in, particularly along the the rivers. So here we have a look at some freshwater mussel floating beds. Oh, I do love my work. I really, really do. I mean, there's something special about being the interpreter, connecting people with the story, with the resources. So we again go in taxonomic order and we'll start off, of course, with the most primitive and work from there. And there's something special because when you do something and you explain something, the eyes light up of the audience when you've kind of hit that chord, you're connected with them. Color is a great field mark. It should not be the only field mark you depend on. That's the beauty. So 
when I first started being a naturalist, I will tell you, there were very few Latinos that were involved in interpretive programming. Now that's changed a lot. Not happy. My mother told me uh, one of the neat things about a person who speaks two languages is she would always say, you're worth two people. You can bring two different perspectives. You can explain things in two different ways. It makes you a better interpreter. So um, we serve that same role and I hope other, uh, others follow in those same footsteps. So I called this a big male and boy was I wrong, wasn't I? Now that I got in front of it. Look at this, it's a soft nursing, it's baby. How cool is that? 